Thanks for watching. I'm Margot Kinberg, and this is In the Spotlight, a closer look at a crime novel. Today will be the last of our special series featuring the 2023 finalists for the Niall Marsh Award for Best Crime Novel, New Zealand's highest crime novel award. Let's turn the spotlight today on Chad Taylor's Blue Hotel. It's 1987, and Ray Moody is a journalist who works for the Herald. A big story comes up when Blanca Noll, a Danish visitor to Auckland, disappears from a pub. There's a lot of publicity about it and the police go out in full force, but she isn't found. Moody finds that Blanca might have posed for a pornographic magazine called The Blue Hotel. He follows up on this, but there are several roadblocks in his way, mostly personal ones. His wife Ava has left him and that's fueled a drinking problem. A year goes by during which time Moody gets fired from his job and hired to edit personal ads for a sleazy tabloid. He's gone sober and is trying to stay that way and he's recovering from an injury suffered in a car crash. While he's dealing with these personal issues, a woman who looks exactly like Blanca Noll is seen and then goes missing. Then she's found dead. Moody digs into the story and finds out that the dead woman was named Amber Drake. Her official cause of death is suicide, but Moody doesn't think that's true. He decides to dig into the story, hoping that finding out the truth will bring his career back to life. The leads Moody follows lead him through Auckland's themier side. BDSM clubs, sleazy hotels, underground places, and he finds connections between those places and the rich and well-protected corporate leaders who don't want their private lives discovered. If Moody is to find out the truth, he'll need to be very careful of people who have every reason to want to shut him up. So what are the elements in this story? How is it held together? Well, this is a noir story where there aren't many likable characters and not many who can be trusted. Moody is doing his best to put his life back together, but he's certainly not perfect. The reader follows Moody through a neon lit gritty Auckland where you can buy or find anything if you have the money to pay for it. It's dangerous and although Moody knows that, he runs into trouble more than once. And that gives the novel somewhat of a thriller sense. There's unexpected danger, people who aren't what they seem in a somewhat fast pace. And Moody can't always rely on people to help when he needs it. Readers who enjoy thrillers will appreciate those aspects of the novel. The story is told from Moody's point of view, third person, past tense. He's not malicious, but he's made some very bad decisions in his life. He makes no excuses for the trouble he's caused and the way his life has turned out. He's working on trying to put his life back together, but it's not easy. And he's up against some people who may be trying to manipulate him. Is he aware of that? Is he the manipulator? Or is something else going on? The mystery, what happened to both young women, is complex. And as Moody unravels it one strand at a time, we see how the different characters are connected. These connections are important to the story. Blue Hotel is the noir story of two disappearances and the connections between them. It features the dark side of Auckland, a cast of untrustworthy characters in a variety of different social classes, and a protagonist who finds it hard to let a story go so that he can heal himself. This has been In the Spotlight. I'm Margot Kinberg. Thanks for watching.